My cardiologist friend texted me this morning about 5.43 a.m. He was already at the hospital treating his third heart attack patient of the day. All three of them were under the age of 50. Then he said something that stopped me cold. Maurice, they all had perfect cholesterol levels. Well, here's something fascinating about heart disease that nobody seems to be talking about. It turns out your daily routine, yes, the mundane stuff you do every single morning, might be more dangerous than your diet. And no, I'm not about to tell you to give up coffee. I'm not a monster. But the snooze button, we need to talk about. So here's what's happening inside your body at 6 a.m. when that alarm goes off. Your suprachiastic nucleus, your master clock, has been preparing for this moment for hours. It's a beautiful symphony of hormones. Cortisol rising, gently, of course. Body temperature increasing. Blood pressure climbing smoothly. Then, you hit snooze. Now, this is where it gets interesting. When you actually fall back asleep and get jolted awake nine minutes later, your sympathetic nervous system goes into full panic mode. We're talking fight or flight response. Your adrenal glands dump epinephrine and norepinephrine. Your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access floods you with cortisol, but not the gentle wake up kind. This is the there's a trigger in a room kind. And your heart rate spikes from 60 to 100 plus beats per minute in seconds. Blood pressure jumps 10 to 15 points. Now multiply this by 3 to 4 snooze cycles. So you're essentially giving yourself mini cardiac stress test every single morning. And your endothelium, the delicate inner lining of your blood vessels, it remembers this trauma. So check this out. I find this absolutely quite fascinating. So this 2019 study from the University of Pennsylvania looked at sleep fragmentation and cardiovascular outcomes in 3,974 participants. Now look at these results. People who hit snooze multiple times had a 23% higher risk of developing hypertension within five years. But here's the kicker. Their traditional risk factors were normal. Then, there's this Japanese study from 2021 on serine and lipoprotein lipase. They use radioactive tracers to track enzyme activity in real time. And after just three hours of serine, LPL activity dropped by 90%. 90%! This enzyme is literally responsible for clearing triglycerides from your bloodstream. But wait! It even gets better or worse, depending on how you look at it. Stanford researchers in 2020 discovered that mouth breathing during sleep reduces endothelial nitric oxide production by up to 42%. They measured this using exhaled nitric oxide concentrations and flow-mediated dilation. Now, participants who switched to nasal breathing showed improved endothelial function in just seven days. That's seven days. Now here where things get, well, I don't want to say crazy, but certainly unexpected. See, remember that cortisol spike from snoozing? Well, if you then skip breakfast, thinking you're doing intermittent fasting, your liver says, oh, we're starving and running from predators. Better make some glucose. And hello, gluconeogenesis. See, your liver starts converting amino acids to glucose, but here's the plot twist. This stress-induced glucose production triggers an insulin response without the benefits of actual food intake. So you get all the metabolic stress with none of the nutritional benefit. It's like your pancreas is working overtime for nothing. And that evening glass of red wine for heart health, the resveratrol content is about 1 to about 2 milligrams per glass. You know how much was used in those famous studies? 250 to 500 milligrams. You'd need to drink 250 glasses of wine to get the study dose. At that point, cirrhosis is your bigger concern. All right, so let's get practical. So based on the research, here's what actually works. First, the alarm situation. 
put it across the freaking room. I know, I know, but hear me out. When you physically get up to turn it off, you actually activate your sympathetic nervous system appropriately. One spike, not five. And for the serine problem, every hour, do what I call metabolic microdosis. Stand up and do 10 body squats or walk for two minutes. This reactivates LPL almost immediately. And for mouth breathing fix, before bed, try this. Breathe through your nose for four counts. Hold it for seven. Out through your pursuit lips for eight. Do this four times. It actually trains your nervous system to maintain nasal breathing during sleep. Some people use mouth tape. I tried it once or a couple of times and it works. And if you're doing intermittent fasting, time it right. Fast when cortisol is naturally low evening through early morning. Break your fast when cortisol peaks naturally around 8 or 9 a.m. This works with your circadian rhythm, not against it. Okay, let's talk context now. Um, these studies are compelling, but they're observational, right? So we can definitely prove causations. Maybe people who hit snooze are just more stressed in general. I mean, I'm not a mouse despite my cheese consumption habits and a human cardiovascular system are infinitely uh, more complex than rodent models. Also, genetics play a huge role. Some people can do everything wrong and live to 95. Others can do everything right and still develop heart disease. Biology isn't fair. And if you're on beta blockers or other cardiac medications, these recommendations might not apply. Your sympathetic nervous system is already being modulated. And honestly, the best approach is probably somewhere in the middle. Perfect is the enemy of good. Now, before you spiral into anxiety about your morning routine, let's talk solutions from food. Natural nitric oxide boosters, you have beets, arugula, about two to 300 milligrams of dietary nitrates daily would be sufficient. That's roughly about one to two cups of arugula and roughly about maybe one, one and a half uh, of beets. Now for endothelial health, omega-3s from fatty fish, you need about two to three grams of EPA and DHA daily. That's calculating about four ounces of wild salmon or black cod. And can you actually eat four ounces of salmon every single day? I tried it. By day five, I was having nightmares about swimming upstream. Dark chocolate, real dark chocolate, we're talking 85% or higher, contains epicatchins that improves endothelial function about 20 to 30 grams daily. It's not bad. That's actually doable. Green teas, you have EGCG, also protects endothelium three to four cups daily gives you that therapeutic doses. Just don't drink it after 2 p.m. unless you enjoy staring at the freaking ceiling uh, midnight. So where does this leave us? Your heart is remarkably resilient. Those daily habits we talked about, they're not death sentences. They're modifiable risk factors. The endothelium can start healing within days. Lipoprotein lipase bounces back quickly your sympathetic nervous system can be retrained. But maybe start with just one change. Put the alarm clock across the freaking room. Take a walking break. Breathe through your nose. Small changes, big impacts. After all, your heart beats about 100,000 times a day. Maybe we should stop making its job harder than it needs to be. That was kind of cheesy even for me, but you actually get the point. So that said, what morning habit are you tackling first? Drop a comment below, and if you want to dive deeper into circadian rhythm optimization, you know where to find me in Substack articles. Otherwise, stay curious and question everything.